Hello. We just finished a meeting of our federal congressional delegation with our federal partners and state partners in regards to the catastrophic loss of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I want to acknowledge those that were at the meeting. Our full 10 members of our federal congressional delegation were present. Uh, we were joined by Governor Moore. Uh, we had Secretary Buttigieg, the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, uh, and we had Administrator Young from OMB that was there. We had representatives from the Army Corps. Uh, Secretary Connor was there and General Spellman was there. And we had representatives from the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, Admiral Gautier uh, was representing the Coast Guard. And we had uh, uh, Paul Wiedefeld, the Secretary of the Maryland Department of Transportation. It was a bipartisan group, and I believe you'll find that there's going to be bipartisan support to do everything we need to to carry out President Biden's commitment to make sure the federal government's there to do everything that's necessary in regards to the catastrophic loss of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, including opening the harbor and uh, the channel, as well as the replacement of the bridge. Uh, and I also always want to acknowledge the extraordinary work of our first responders who saved lives. We tragically lost six souls. Uh, our hearts and prayers and thoughts are with them, as well as the support systems that we have developed to help those families. Uh, we recognize that many lives were saved because of the quick response from the first responders. President Biden has made it clear and has delivered on the commitment that the per personnel resources of the federal government will be there, have been there from day one to get the job done as quickly as possible, and we are extremely thankful. We got an update uh, in regards to the opening of the channel. Incredible work had been done. These divers that go down there, it's really dangerous work. Uh, we now have two channel, alternative channels that are open. We have a third channel that will be opened this month that will deal with the majority of traffic into the Port of Baltimore. And by the end of May, we hope to have the entire ch channel reopened. That's incredible work by very talented people. Uh, we also are working right now on the replacement of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So the question was asked, what do you need from Congress in order to make this happen the way that we want to make sure it's happened without any delay? And we intend to introduce legislation very soon, uh, the, coordinated through our delegation, that will clarify that in regards to the federal participation by the state, uh, that this will be 100 percent federal funds in regards to the costs related to the, the destruction and replacement of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. That legislation is, is, is necessary because of a 90-10 in the original uh, uh, language. This is not unprecedented. Uh, the 100 percent was used in regards to the Minnesota Bridge replacement. And uh, this is a commitment uh, that is normal for this type of a catastrophic loss of a major infrastructure in, in, our, in our country. We will also make it clear, as it is under current law, that in regards to any third-party recoveries, any third-party recoveries from uh, liable entities or insurance will go to relieve the tax, federal taxpayers of the burdens that have been sustained as a result of the loss of the bridge. But as uh, it was pointed out at this meeting, that process will not delay the immediate moving forward with the replacement of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. We will not delay until liability is established. But once liability is established and funds are received, it will go towards the taxpayers. I've said this uh, often. Uh, the unified command has been unbelievably effective and bringing all of us together to be able to respond that the way that we have. The leader of our state of Maryland has made that his priority. Uh, it's ever since the bridge came down, he's been there every single day, making sure that our state agencies are working in conjunction with our federal partners so that we can get the job done on behalf of those that are affected by the bridge that have come down, the families of the victims, as well as making sure the channel is opened as quickly as possible and the bridge is replaced. So I'm very proud of the leadership we have in the state of Maryland, and it's now my honor to bring up the governor of the state of Maryland, Senator Moore. Governor Moore. Good morning. 
I'm, uh, I'm, I'm beyond grateful to, uh, to Senator Cardin, not just for, for the leadership and for the vision, but also for the invitation to be here today. Uh, and, and I'm thankful to this entire delegation. I, I say I am blessed that I have uh, the most outstanding federal delegation that any governor could ever ask for. And I'm grateful because today represents exactly what it has been like for these past two weeks. Uh, because the state of Maryland is still very much mourning. We're still very much mourning the loss of six Marylanders who were working in the middle of the night doing dangerous work that did not have to be deadly. That the state of Maryland is still mourning because we know that there are, there are still three souls that are still unaccounted for. And for them, for their families, we continue to pray for them and to pray with them and pray over them. But we also know that the meeting today was very emblematic of the kind of support that the state of Maryland has had from the very beginning. Because about two weeks ago, a part of our soul fell into the Patapsco River, a part of our landscape, and a part of what makes Baltimore, Maryland so special. And literally from the first moments of that happening, watching the response of our federal delegation, watching the response of the Biden administration, watching the response of our federal partners from the Army Corps of Engineers to the Coast Guard to Navy Soup Salt, that this has been a true coordinated effort. And we're grateful. And I just stand here as simply a representative of 6.3 million people who are not just here to say thank you, but also here to say that we are prepared to be partners in this work for the long run. That we know it is imperative that the four objectives that we have laid out have to be accomplished, that we have to make sure that we are providing a sense of closure and a sense of comfort to these families, that we have to make sure that we are getting the channel reopened, that we have to make sure that we are taking care of those who have been directly impacted, including our first responders, including our port workers, including these families, and we have to make sure that we are rebuilding the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And that the state plans on being full partners inside of that work. And knowing that just in these past days, we have done things like on last Friday where I signed an executive order allowing the release of $60 million that's going towards supporting our workers and individual small businesses impacted, that later on today I'll be heading back up to Annapolis to sign the Maryland Port Act, where we worked in partnership with the General Assembly to ensure that our port workers are not going to be forgotten in this, and also that the children of those who have died due to transportation accidents that their education can be taken care of. And then we've also been able to launch things like the Maryland Tough Baltimore Strong Alliance, which is an alliance of over 80 businesses and organizations, philanthropy and private sector, who have said that in this moment they will step up and double down in their support of Baltimore and in their support of Maryland and in support of the people impacted. But we also know that the support from the federal government and the support of Congress is also going to be imperative in this. And so the chance to stand in partnership with people like Director Young and Secretary Buttigieg and the entire team from the Biden-Harris administration and all of our federal partners with our congressional delegation, I just want to say on behalf of 6.3 million people that we appreciate it. It's never going to be forgotten. And we plan on being parts with you every single step of the way going forward. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to another member of our fantastic delegation, Senator Chris Van Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Well, what you see here is a partnership united in common purpose. The purpose being, first and foremost, to support the families of the six souls that we lost on that tragic day, to embrace and thank and support uh, the first responders who put themselves at risk to help others, and then to get upon, about the business of making sure we open the port, we deepen the channel, that work is already underway, that as that work moves along, that we support the workers uh, who have been uh, displaced and delayed uh, because the port is closed, as the longshoremen and thousands and thousands of other workers uh, and small businesses uh, that rely on the business of the port uh, for their livelihood. So that is the one big step going on right now, and of course, rebuilding uh, the bridge together. Now, in this process, uh, we've seen that unity of purpose matters, and I want to thank President Biden and his entire 
team uh, for being on the job from day one. Uh, early in the day uh, of this disaster, uh, many of us got phone calls from the President. Uh, it wasn't just to say, my heart is with you. It was to say, here's what I've already ordered. And he laid out what he had already said and done. Uh, and then to say, and we're here for anything else that you need. So to Secretary Buttigieg, uh, to Director Young, to all of the partners who are here, the Army Corps, the Coast Guard, the folks who aren't here, the Department of Labor, the SBA, at a moment like this when you see a tragedy and disaster that has national impact and national scope, you realize just how indispensable the federal government is to making sure that a city like Baltimore and the state of Maryland uh, can get on its feet and be made whole. So I want to thank the President and all the executive partners here. Uh, our governor, our governor has been nonstop. He's been on this every day, 24-7, with his team. Secretary Wiederfeld is here, uh, but his entire team. Uh, and again, uh, making sure that we hit those key issues, beginning with supporting the families um, of who lost a loved ones. So, Governor, thank you uh, and your entire team. The mayor of Baltimore is not here, but I do want to thank the mayor, Mayor Scott, uh, and all that they have uh, done uh, as well. Uh, and of course, uh, the, 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 my colleagues in the, in the federal delegation, we are united in our efforts uh, to make sure that we move forward. Um, the executive branch of the federal government is already on the job. Um, Senator Cardin, as you know, heard, is going to lead our effort here to introduce legislation uh, shortly to make good on the President's commitment uh, that the federal government will be there entirely for the state of Maryland. He and the executive branch are, are doing what they need to do. Uh, now it's up to all of us in Congress on a bipartisan basis uh, to finish that job, to make sure that um, having entered already uh, the emergency relief program, and Secretary Buttigieg, thank you and your team for such fast work there, already released $60 million. That program already provides that 90 percent of the costs of a new bridge will be covered through that program. There are lots of other states of all political persuasions uh, that rely on that fund, and so we look forward to working together on a bipartisan basis to making sure that fund uh, is available for all those projects. Uh, that are there. And then, as Senator Cardin said, uh, we will be introducing legislation for the other 10 percent, making crystal clear what is already in the law, but emphasizing the fact that any funds retrieved through lawsuits and, and, and liability um, are returned uh, entirely to the federal uh, taxpayer. So uh, a, a lot of work that's been done, a lot of work still to be done. Um, and now let me uh, uh, turn it over to somebody who not only has been on this 24-7, but uh, made phone calls to members of our delegation 3 a.m. as soon as he heard the news uh, of this disaster. He was on the job, visited the Port of Baltimore that day. He's been guiding us uh, through this important work uh, from the executive branch perspective, and that is uh, Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Mayor Pete. Thanks very much, Senator, and uh, I want to begin by acknowledging and, and recognizing the extraordinary, unified, focused, bipartisan response of Maryland's delegation from the first hours of this disaster. Uh, that has served the people of Maryland well. It has also helped us in uh, meeting our goal, as set by President Biden, of being the best possible partner in the executive branch. Uh, likewise, the extraordinary leadership of Governor Wes Moore and his team uh, has served the people of Maryland well and has made it possible for us to be in seamless integration in making sure that every federal tool can be brought to bear uh, to deal with this, both in the immediate response and for the long term. President Biden has had the same message internally to the executive branch that he has had externally to the public, uh, the delegation, and the people of Maryland, which is to use every tool at our disposal uh, to make sure that we help Baltimore and Maryland recover stronger than ever before. Uh, much of that has been led by uh, sister agencies like the Coast Guard, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, and others. From a U.S. Department of Transportation perspective, that's focused on four major lines of effort helping Maryland reopen the port, dealing with supply chain implications until the port is reopened, 
helping Maryland to reopen and re uh, rebuild the bridge and dealing with the surface transportation implications in the meantime. Already we have released $60 million in emergency relief funding that is going toward immediate uses both related to the wreckage removal and to the preparation for the building of the new bridge. Uh, also we were able to amend a grant that was already underway for the port uh, to help benefit a part, one of the few parts of the port that is outside of the channel uh, to help them accelerate some of their development to take on on more of the vehicle traffic that is disrupted or diverted in the meantime. Uh, those are just some examples where there is going to be much more to come. Uh, in order to continue that work, we will uh, need to make sure that the emergency relief fund is at a healthy level, something that uh, the delegation has expressed its determination to make sure it happens uh, and that we certainly hope and expect will be a bipartisan goal. On the authorization side, as was mentioned earlier, getting to 100 percent to make sure that the letter of the law makes possible the President's commitment and intention, uh, which is that uh, this will be 100 percent supported federally. That is, uh, uh, of course, uh, including uh, the awareness that there may be pl private parties held liable for this. Uh, it is our expectation that the federal taxpayer will be made whole, uh, but we do not want that to get in the way. That is why whatever insurance litigation and other related processes play out, uh, we are not going to wait for them to play out to make sure these dollars are getting to where they need to be, and where they need to be is helping the people of Maryland rebuild right now. Uh, we will stand ready, at the, as the President has directed, from the first hours for as long as it takes. Uh, and we're, again, thankful and admiring of the partnership of everybody who has uh, come to, to step up and, and support this effort at every level. Uh, with that, let me turn it to uh, a member of the House of Representatives whose district uh, is most impacted, though clearly every district district in uh, Maryland and so many places beyond Maryland have been impacted. But we have had a great partner in Representative Kwesi Mfume. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I obviously want to echo much of what has been said, but I would really be at fault if I did not first thank our governor, who from the instant that this disaster occurred, marshaled all of the resources in the state of Maryland and then ultimately around the country to bring us together as a team. Governor Moore, the people of Maryland really appreciate that and the people of Maryland will remember it forever. I want to also thank Senator Cardin for convening us today here along with his uh, partner in the Senate, Senator Van Hollen both of whom's leadership has been extraordinary, so that we might talk about the federal effort more and talk more about how we feed into, but more importantly, how we support the effort. Uh, President Biden has put forward a plan. We are all looking and working and trying to find a way to make that come to life. And so whether it's the Army Corps of Engineers, which has done an excellent job, or the United States Coast Guard, an equally great job. Se the uh, Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Buttigieg, who was just here, who's being a little humble, but I have to tell you was one of the first boots on the ground to move us to where we had to be. This is a tough one. I think we all know that. It's been a tough two weeks for many of us who've been there at that bridge over and over again, like so many of the people here behind me. But it's proven to be something that has allowed the state of Maryland, and I hope the country, to recognize that it can still overcome disasters and tragedies by working together. I want to thank the Speaker of the House, Speaker Johnson. I want to thank Majority, Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, both of whom have expressed to me personally and to many of you their sincere desire to want to find a way to get us beyond this point. Our thanks also to Rosa DeLora on appropriations and Tom Cole, the soon-to-be chair of appropriations, for not only understanding this, but pledging their support in every way possible. And every now and then, when we have been doing these, we stop to make mention of those six men on that bridge, stories that really have not yet been told. Men 
who have been in this country 16, 17 years, working two jobs, who are married, raising children, giving of their heart and soul and sweat, and who on that fateful night met their end. We, as the governor said in Maryland, and I hope all over the nation, continue to lift them in prayers. Their lives, as we know, will never be the same again. And we want to thank the people on the ground, the 3,000 plus longshoremen, all of whom on the docks know that their jobs are in jeopardy for a while, all the small business owners and truck drivers, all the first responders and the people who've given of themselves with food for the workers on the scene. I would be remiss if we did not mention that, and to mention also the great people of the Dundalk community and the Turner Station community who have embraced all that has been going on and have helped to make it much better for those of us who've been on the ground. So what you see here is the Maryland model, a model way of trying to move forward in a disaster that's not partisan in any way whatsoever, and a model of men and women of different walks of life and backgrounds, recognizing that it may have been our port, but it also belongs to our nation and the supply chain that potentially could be disrupted. It's a thing that we want to try to find a way to prevent. So I mentioned a moment ago the great work of the Army Corps of Engineers. It's my pleasure to introduce and to bring to you General Spellman, who's overseen much of that command and has helped significantly get us to where we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I want to start out by thanking Senator Cardin and Governor Moore for inviting us to this morning's discussion. We are very, very proud to be a part of this team. And I do want to begin by saying uh, we are forever mindful of the governor, Governor Moore, and President Biden's number one priority, and that is to do all we can to find the remaining missing three workers and return them to their families. We are going to go about a lot of heavy lifting of steel and concrete in the weeks ahead, and we have to do that with a lot of care and precision. And we are proud to be just one small part of a much larger team from the city of Baltimore, certainly the state of Maryland, the Coast Guard, the United States Navy, and many, many others. We are just of the collective assessment from our work over the past 14 days that we have to start moving more and heavier debris to find the missing workers and also to reopen this strategic port for the, uh, for the nation. The Federal Navigation Channel into the Port of Baltimore is 700 feet wide by 50 feet deep, and today it has 9,000 tons of steel at the bottom and 3,000 tons of concrete. Many of you have seen the picture of the section of the steel truss hanging off the front of the vessel dolly. That uh, section alone weighs 5,000 tons, and I shared with President Biden during his visit to the uh, port last Friday, 5,000 tons, that's the equivalent of 12 Air Force Ones fully loaded with uh, gasoline. We're committed to uh, getting this concrete and steel out of the channel by the end of May, and that work has already commenced. We've had 51 divers in the water over the past uh, 14 days, and we've also found an opportunity to do some concurrent work where we can restore some access to the port short of the full Federal Navigation Channel. We're calling that a limited access channel. It's 280 feet wide by 35 feet deep, and what that will allow is about 80 percent of the cargo that currently comes into the, uh, the city of Baltimore, the port of Baltimore, to restore access, one-way traffic, and about 74 percent of the cargo that leaves the port of Baltimore will be able to use that limited access channel, and we will deliver that channel by the end of this month in April. In fact, we'll be down in our labs in Vicksburg, Mississippi, beginning tomorrow through Friday. We're going to bring the Maryland Association of Pilots, a number of captains, that, uh, that sail vessels of various sizes, and we're going to go through all of the protocols so we can have safe transit of this, uh, this temporary navigation channel. And I will be followed by Congressman Hoyer. Thank you very much, General. When the dolly hit the concrete and the steel on that bridge, it hit us all. And it has been said that great tragedies often bring out the best in people, the best uh, commitment to making a difference to meet that tragedy and make sure that we correct and build and unite. And I want to thank Governor Moore for his leadership. I want to thank President Biden for his leadership on behalf of all of the delegation. Without their focus and quick action, 
And Secretary Buttigieg, I thank you for not calling me at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, my district is somewhat far, relatively speaking, in Maryland, a small state, uh, from the bridge. But all my people that I represent in Southern Maryland were hit and adversely affected by this tragedy. Not only did we lose six souls who were working to make sure that bridge was serviceable, but we lost the economic impact for the nation, as has been said, and I would add the international community that ships its goods here um, to Baltimore, one of the busiest ports in America. Uh, all has been said about the cooperation that has occurred. Uh, Senator Cardin, I want to thank you and, and Senator Van Hollen. Uh, you represent the port, along with Kwesi and Fumi, uh, and John Sarbanes, and Dutch Ruppersberger. Uh, the rest of us, however, are equally committed to making sure that we heal this wound in our state, in our nation, and service the rest of the world. I want to yield to somebody who represented this district for some 20 years. Uh, who is retiring from the Congress, but as a member of the Appropriations Committee, uh, along with David Trum, will be working with me and Congressman Harris. We're one of the few states in America that has four members of the Appropriations Committee. And we will be working tirelessly until we get the sums that are necessary, as I said, to heal this wound. Now let me yield to my friend, uh, Dutch Ruppersberger. Well, most has been said about what we know is happening right now. We had a disaster. We've come together as a team. Uh, we're working federal, state, and local. <clears throat> you know, this country has problems now, as we know, partisan problems. But it takes a disaster, something like this, to bring us together. And I see this as a way that our country can come back together. So I'm going to uh, defer now to... Congressman Sarbanes. Um, I, I, I'm just really proud of this team and everyone involved in making things better now that we move forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dutch. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I was born in Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore. I still live in the Baltimore area. I feel that Baltimore pride that says when we get knocked down, we pick ourselves back up, and people all over the region were picking themselves back up on that day after this uh, bridge collapsed. But we can't do it by ourselves, uh, which is why I want to thank President Biden and his team for the immediate and ongoing response. I want to salute Governor Moore and his team. Together we're going to get through this, and we got assurances uh, in the meeting we had today that that unified, coordinated response is going to be there in the short, medium, and long term, uh, led certainly by Senator Cardin, Senator Van Hollen, Congressman Mfume, uh, who've been in the forefront of this response over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Baltimore is a tough place. There's a lot of grit there. Uh, and there's a lot of deep pride, and you're seeing all of that coming to the fore in this critical moment. So we're going to keep pushing through. We're going to get that channel cleared.
President's desk so that we can bring relief uh, again to the, to the City of Baltimore, the State of Maryland, and get that bridge rebuilt. Thank you. Congressman David Trump. And bringing up the rear end. Uh, first of all, what's most important to think about, again, as was mentioned, the six souls that lost their lives, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. These are immigrants that are so often vilified throughout our country now, yet they're often the greatest Americans, Americans that work the toughest jobs and the toughest hours of the day with very little respect and compensation. So we need to continue to honor them and realize their importance to our society. I want to also thank Governor Moore, his leadership on the ground, being there every day. He has been the quarterback. He's been the go-to guy to get this partnership with the federal government executed. So he has just been a rock star on this effort. But at the same time, as I mentioned, as an appropriator, a bipartisan appropriator, working with Congressman Harris, future appropriations chair, Tom Cole, we got to bring these dollars home in a positive way. But at the same time, the devils, the devils are the details. And we got to make sure we execute on President Biden's promises. His promise to make sure that union labor builds this bridge. We need these projects to have project labor agreements so our union brothers and sisters can build the bridges right and the right way and on time. And we got to keep thinking about those that have lost wages, our longshoremen, our small businessmen in the Port of Baltimore, $2.2 million a day, lost wages. Guess what? $430 a week unemployment ain't going to cover it. The special fund by the state, maybe $600 a week. That's not going to cover it. They still got mortgages to meet, food to put on the table. So we need an all of government effort not to just let that slip through the cracks and say, oh, the port's open now again. It's June 1. Too bad. The, government, the president's made a commitment to all those there to make up on those lost wages, and we've got to come through on that. And that's what this team will do. So thank you. Let me also acknowledge that Congressman Raskin and Ivy joined us for the uh, delegation meeting. Uh, and let me just underscore the point that Congressman Harris made and others that we are going to work in a nonpartisan, bipartisan manner to make sure that we can deliver on the commitment that President Biden has made and that has been used in previous uh, disasters similar to this. With that, we'll open it up for questions. What? what a, and Senator Cardin, what kind of commitment do you all have and how strong a commitment do you all have from House Republican leadership to put whatever you draft on the floor? Because some of what you've mentioned, union requirements, no offsets, may not fly with House Republican leadership. The, the legislation that we're going to be offering will be to do what has been done in previous disasters to make it clear that it's 100 percent federal cost in regards to the monies that have already been allocated. Uh, we're not, this, this is a, a cost share issue that we are uh, talking about, which has been used in previous disasters. I am encouraged by the conversations and comments I've heard from my Republican colleagues. Uh, they have been very open uh, to uh, this legislation. And Senator McConnell, the Republican leader, has been very kind in his comments. I've talked to Senator Capito, who's the uh, ranking Republican on the authorizing committee. The bill will go to the Environment and Public Works Committee in the, in the Senate. I've talked to Senator Carper about this. I've talked to the staff on both sides. So I am optimistic we will get the traditional bipartisan support to move this legislation. If I have a Senator Carper's committee tomorrow, I'm filling the mail. Can you follow up to that with uh, Congressman Harris for you as well? Uh, we know the House Freedom Caucus is making some demands for federal funding, waiving environmental regulations, waiving labor contracts. Uh, how will, do you plan to get this through if those demands stand? And Representative Harris, do you stand by that? You said this would be a bipartisan question. So let me make it clear, because there's a lot of other issues that may get engaged, as we do with any public contracts. That's not necessary for Congress to take legislative action. So we will be working with the Biden administration to address all the concerns of our colleagues to make sure that we get 
the best cost and quickest action, particularly in the replacement of the bridge. I was impressed by the conversations of Secretary Buttigieg and, uh, and, and Secretary Wiedefeld about using a process that will streamline the, pro the procedure so that we can get a modern replacement bridge that meets the needs done as quickly and as uh, cost effectively as possible and as safely as possible uh, to, to deal with this issue. So th there will be times and discussions for all these points. The fundamental issue right now is passing legislation to clarify that this is 100 percent federal responsibility. Chairman Cardin got it right. Look, there are steps in this process. The first step is about cost share. There is no debate about cost share. You know, in this tragedy, Maryland should not have to bear part of the cost. That's going to be the focus of, I believe, the first piece of legislation that comes through. Thank you. Um, two, two quick questions, one's for Congressman Harris. The, fir the first is, what is the ballpark uh, estimated cost for this bridge? How much money are we talking about? And then my second question for Congressman Harris is, do you intend to lobby the Freedom Caucus for the other steps in this process after the cost sharing? I didn't hear the second question. Maybe he did. The, the, uh, the, the cost estimates are unknown. That's the work is going on now to try to estimate the costs of the projects. It's not known at this particular moment. They're still dealing with the clearing, and that's, those costs are being incurred as we speak. The initial allocation was $60 million in regards to the bridge collapse. Uh, those funds have already been encumbered, M not all, but most have. But we do not know the total cost of a replacement bridge. I don't think we know that. Uh, we, we had some discussions in, in our delegation meeting, and the experts don't know that. They don't know the range right now. It depends on the design of the bridge, the modern technologies to make sure it protects. Uh, there's been a 3,000 percent increase since 1975 when this bridge was constructed in regards to the amount of traffic cargo that goes through uh, the, uh, the channel itself. So it's, it needs to meet the current needs in regards to structure, height, et cetera, and that's being evaluated as we speak. Uh, what the commitment is to make sure that the key bridge is replaced. It's replaced with a bridge that re represents the, cotter, the modern capacities for a bridge of this type with the, with the type of vehicle traffic and over a, a very active uh, channel. Uh, and those costs will be reviewed, and they're looking at ways to streamline it to make it as cost-effective for the taxpayers of our country.